just letting the axe head soak. You can see the vinegar's getting the paint off of it. You can almost just like peel it, you know. So we're gonna let that keep soaking. White vinegar is amazing. Took off all the rust. And it's actually eating the pain off. I'll get back with you. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Wrong with Skizzers. As you can tell from the beginning of the video, um, I'm starting another restoration on an axe. Uh, what I'm doing is I wanted to build my perfect axe. Um, I built a lot of stuff for friends and family over the years. A lot of old stuff and I really don't have anything like super old you know I got a couple hammers um, I got horseshoe nail polers you know those are probably a hundred years old but no axes you know all my axes are new and I thought it was time I'm gonna build a custom axe for myself with a vintage head and I couldn't think of a better company to go to than Woodings Verona Tool Works. Um, I came across this lot of two. It was a buy one, get one free. These are Woodings Verona Michigan axe heads. Uh, not price bad, $30. As you can see, the white vinegar did its job. It actually removed all the paint, cleaned it up real nice. Um, one of my favorite things about this if you look at that grind that is a factory grind um it is sharp i don't know if i'd go trying to shave with it because it's a rough grind but it is definitely super sharp um only found one defect with it you might not be able to see it right here there's a hairline crack and if that would happen to break off, uh, it's no big deal. It's close enough to the edge. I can reprofile it, make it like it never happened. Um, they were really innovative. Not so much with the pattern, but I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. Let me stand up here. If you look inside... Right here, that's a shelf. And basically the design of this is you get your handle through and whenever you pound your wedges, you don't have to make this hang proud to get that swell. The swell happens inside the handle and I thought that was really cool. Um, when I do go to hang this, I'm gonna decide because I do like the, the look of the handle hanging proud, but the way this is designed, probably for extra insurance, I'd be better off hanging it the way it was designed. Um, just beautiful, really is. It's drop forged, you know, not hand forged. It was made in 1991. Um, but yeah, it's perfect for me. What I'm looking to build is something to bridge the gap between a boy's axe and a felling axe. Um, boys axes, their average weight is two and a half pounds, which is good, but two and a half pound head, you can't put a really long handle on, um, unless you make your own, but the eye section so small, you could run a great chance of breaking the handle. Um, a felling axe, their average weight's around four pounds, which is great, but just a little too heavy for what I'm looking for. And the other problem with felling axes, they are only designed to chop. I want something that can do the work of a boy's axe, chop and split. Um, so I figured, you know what? Did a lot of research. This weighs into th three pounds, two ounces. That's close enough for what I'm looking for. Um, I want to have a 30 inch handle, so I'll have to still go ahead and order that. Um, but yeah, 
just a quick history on Woodings Verona. Uh, they were established in the 1880s and in 1890 they hit it big. Um, they got a government contract with the U.S. Forest Service and a couple other departments and a couple years later they hit it real big. The Pennsylvania Ro Railroad gave them a contract and they built every tool for the Pennsylvania Railroad in their locomotive shops, their maintenance away departments. All the tools were generally Woodings Verona. And everything ran smooth, you know. They really didn't have a big civilian market at that time. Now, in the 70s, they started distributing to, like, local hardware stores and basically files, hammers, axes, anstas, um, digging bars, wrenches. They built pretty much everything you can imagine. If it was made of metal and in 1993 they ran into problems they had to file for bankruptcy and they still made tools after that but there was conditions and they didn't have much of a market because of those conditions when you get into the after the bankruptcy uh, the quality was still good just like this one but basically they were only allowed to sell get their old stock and they just remarked them with new dates just to keep up but they only had so much supply so supply ran out and they ran into a, another problem um, in 1997 Ames Corp acquired them and that's what this axe head is is an Ames Corp this was post 1997 and they were still okay, drop forged, but they're more along your line of modern hardware store axes at this point. The steel isn't like super hard. Um, as you can see, they use plastic wedges, which honestly might not be a bad thing because considering the this axe is 20 years old, um, it never failed from a loose handle. The handle was broke when I got it, so I cut it off. Um, around 2002, they pretty much completely vanished. Uh, never to be made again. The building still stands in Oakmont, PA, border in Verona, PA. And I've been there and still says, Woodings Verona Tool Works on the, across the front of it, but the building's dead. Um, windows are smashed out. The only reason it's still standing is a private company that owns and operates cement trucks, uses the facility as a parking lot and a garage. Um, that's pretty much it, though, as far as the history of Woodings Verona. There isn't a whole lot out there on it, you know, considering they were a big company for the state of Pennsylvania and even across the nation, you know, after Ames Corp brought, bought them out. But being hardware store axes, you know, they're a dime a dozen. So it doesn't surprise me that they just quit being used and manufactured. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get the handle ordered and I'll get right back with you and we'll start hanging this thing and build what I consider the perfect axe. All right. It's about three days later. Um, made a little progress on the head, cleaned it up. Um, I want to keep this as a working axe. And I thought about polishing the head to a mere finish, but I didn't want to go that hard. Um, I really like the patina on this. There's a couple casting marks there. Casting marks there. I kept the grinds, but I leveled them out. 
can't even feel them, but you can still see them. There was a uh, real gnarly looking grind marks here and casting. So I smoothed all that out. But I didn't take the grind marks out. Like I said, I kind of wanted to keep the original aesthetics. You could see a lot of imperfections, but other than the casting marks, you can't feel any of this. You could just see it. So I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. Now I did sharpen this. Um, I kept the factory edge though, the profile. I didn't change it. I just want to see how it chops with the factory profile. Um, they get the handle in. Oh, uh, I went with the Council Toll 32 inch felling axe handle. As you can see, it causes cancer. Anymore, everything you buy causes cancer, even a piece of wood. <laughs> but one thing I did was. I test fitted the head. Look how far down it went. Now, it actually fits really good. It starts shelving, so I'm gonna have some cleanup to do. You can see how far it goes on, which isn't a bad thing. Like I said, this is a 32 inch handle. My goal for it being my personal ax, um, I want to keep it around 30 inches. I think that's perfect length for me. So all I got to do pretty much is just clean this up and get this head set. get this thing cleaned up now the reason I went with the council tool handle was mostly I've never had bad luck with the council tool handles um, I've never I can't say I've ever actually had a head come loose never had them break um, it just seemed like a good handle, you know, and even though this is a custom build to suit me, suit my needs, um, I don't need to spend big money on a handle, you know, I mean, I'd love to put like a Killinger handle on this. Killinger, that guy, man, he makes some really good stuff, um fucking Billy you know he even has his own axe line, handle line now and that's really cool you know but they're $85 you know and this isn't going to be an axe that's going to sit around at all this honestly is going to be a wedge banger um it's going to get used. It's going to get abused. And I just didn't want to spend huge money on a handle for something that I'm going to beat the hell out of. Um, just for what my needs are, you know. But Council Toll, their handles are good, you know. And like I said, I mean, it's hard to complain, but the fit of this right out of the box it's hard to beat you know a little bit loose but I'm confident now the way I'm gonna set this head isn't the way I normally do this but being I'm starting fresh um, there's nothing wrong with doing it this way this heads nice and square but all I'm doing, I ain't going to hit the back of the handle. I got a cement floor with carpet. I 
that's a tight fit. And as you can see, that is seated down. A little bit of curling, but no shelf. Maybe a little bit there. I'm not worried about that. We'll even get a couple more bumps just to make sure. There we go. Now, if you notice, got about an inch and a half of material left over up top. Um, when I go to put the wedge in, that's not going to be good. So I'm going to have to cut the top of this off. But yeah, that's going to be a nice axe. Let's see, with where we're seated, about how long we are. We are exactly 30 inches. It doesn't get much better than that at all. So, yeah, I'm going to get this cut off and we'll get that wedge seated in. Okay. You can see right there we got a crack. Ain't no big deal though. I'm going to get this cut off. And on to the next step. Now you can see that is monster of a hang. That turned out really good. You can see it's wedged out. That turned out perfect. See the bottom, a little bit there, curling, a little bit there, but that is absolutely just tight. Um, let's see what our overall length is. Now I'm going to go top of the axe. We're at 30. Thirty inches exact, man. Thirty inch. Oh, it's just so light, <laughs> you know, compared to a regular felling axe. Good feel. Has a nice handle. It'll look better once I get it cleaned up and uh, get some linseed oil on it. But so far. He's starting out really good. I'm debating if I'm going to put a wedge in now. Honestly, as good of a hang as is, I really don't need one. I don't see that moving at all. I don't know. Might come up with something special for that. All right, we'll start getting this handle cleaned up. Oh, there was a uh, subscriber um, wanted to see my EDC knife. Uh, this is a 22-year-old 20, buck. I think this is the... Oh, man, you can't even read it. Uh, it's the 102. Mark 102. Um, it's been a really good knife. Nice edge. Nice point. You can see how long I had it though. There's a lot of meat taken off from all the sharpenings over the years. Tang's a little loose on it. I don't know if you can hear that. But. I know they got a lifetime warranty if I send it in they'll fix it, but that tang's been loose for at least 15 years that I can recall. I'd actually highly recommend getting one of these because if you live in an open carry state, 
Um, like I live in Pennsylvania, you're allowed to open carry. Nobody says anything about this. If you go into the grocery store and stuff, it's on my hip. Just like this all the time. Nobody gives me funny looks, anything like that. Um, definitely a very good size knife. Now, I don't know if Council Cool puts like a wax or something on these handles. But I like scraping them down anyway. Just gives you a, a clean slate to apply your boiled linseed oil. Get rid of all the fingerprints from the hanging process. Um, I've never, I can't say I've ever gotten one of these handles like dirty or messed up. It just seems like uh, Council Toll has their stuff together. I'm not sure who makes their handles, whether it's them or if they subcontract these out to another company. But for the price, you can't beat it. I think this handle cost me around. $30 delivered. I mean, they aren't perfect. You know, this one has a 45 degree grain. It, that don't matter. You know, everybody wants a straight grain. Kind of get that uh, effect when you have straight grain, you know like a, almost like looking at a um, naval map you know see the high spots and the low spots of lakes and rivers they're just straight up beautiful when they're straight grain but I got axes with horizontal grain patterns and I'll take it they do have thicker handles on them you know but never can't say I've ever had an issue you know not as far as grain I'm not really a believer in perfect handles you know as long as there's no knots knots are the big thing don't want no knots. Oh. I definitely gave myself a case of tennis elbow. It's been hard to swing a hammer or Swing an axe for that matter. But nothing you can do. It keeps food on the table for the waking kid. So there ain't no stopping. Making a living sometimes got to come first over your own health. But hey, uh, sitting at home because your elbow hurts didn't build this country. Bad though. Struggling here. This isn't the axe sheath for this axe. 
but I wanted to see if it fit. This is actually the sheath for my uh, council tool splitting axe. Favorite part to me about any axe project is customizing the handle. You know, and you don't even have to go crazy with them. A lot of times the wood grain, it's its own custom look. The way the axe head is, that's where I left all these imperfections. Kind of just gives it its own personality. You know, and doesn't uh, blend in with other axes. You know, it doesn't take much. Let's see if I got a piece of sandpaper here. Ah, that sandpaper. Run some scotch break down it. Even everything out. Not a super bad handle. Looks good though. I like that. Boy, that's a nice axe. All right. Now, walk this in. And put some boiled linseed oil on her. I don't know if I'm going to burnish this handle or not. I haven't really decided. But I figure I'll get some oil on it. Just see what the handle actually looks like. And possibly fix some of the bad spots. a little more on it and let this dry some people say you can't burn a handle after you put linseed oil on I've actually never had too much of a problem with that as long as it's dry that's the biggest thing you know not to worry about it. Every handle enough access to where I'm comfortable not worrying about it. Yeah. I don't know. Kind of hate for it to look like all my other axes. You know, I think every one of them, other than the Rinaldi, I burned the handles. Well, that and the Grand's Force Brooks, let me uh, grab out as a comparison. Boy. This axe is quite a few years old. And the sandal was never burned. I don't know. That might be a nice look for it. Just let it darken up on its own naturally. I'm kind of thinking 
doing that route. Um, you know what? I have an idea. Yeah. Uh, grab something real quick. Yeah. Here we go. Well, well, it's still hot. Kind of trying to go for almost an old school look. You know, back in the day when people used to mark their axes. But uh, give it like a faded finish, too. There we go, slather that up in linseed oil. See, over time, I look really good. Try and get it in the light. I think that'll be all right for this axe. This is the same thing I did with the uh, council tool boys axe, except that one I did the whole handle. But now I got the best of both worlds. You know, I didn't burn any of this. So this will age just like the uh, Grants Force Brooks, which is probably my top five handles. And the Constable Boys Axe, which is also top five handle in my collection. Boy, this is 
going to be great. Just try and get all this pretty well coated. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I figure it's American axe head, American handle. We all know all the steel products, fasteners, especially wedges, they're all Chinese. So what's more American than 30-06 shells? If you guys want to see a video on how I did those, let me know in the comments. It's actually fairly easy if you're careful. And the only reason I did them is because the hang on this axe was perfect. You know, if you have a head that's kind of iffy, where you don't think you could get away with just the uh, wood wedge and chop some wood, um, I wouldn't recommend doing this technique. Um, they spread the wood, but not a whole, whole lot. You need a really good fitting hang to uh, pull it off. But yeah, let me know in the comments if you want to see that. Oh, look at that. Just beautiful. Absolutely. It's really something. I'm going to do something with the palm swell. But for now, it's okay. I think all I'm going to do, honestly is level it off get rid of the flat spot make it a clean fawn's foot but before i do that i do want to test this axe because you never know i'm confident in the hang on this i honestly don't think it'll move but if it does i don't have to throw this handle away i can redo it but yeah there's my custom axe. If you guys liked this episode, please like, share, and subscribe. Really enjoyed making this axe. Um, kind of a custom build. That's why I really didn't show too, too much. You know, wanted to make it my own. You know, and I got other hanging videos. And you guys could always go and watch those. If you don't like the shit I put out, there's plenty of others on YouTube. A lot of people out there know a lot more than I do. I just do this for fun. Oh man, that's beautiful. But yeah. If you guys like round with skizzers, catch me on the next one. We're going to try this bad boy out.